Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the 91st meeting of the Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority. I guess it's kind of ironic that it's the 91st meeting <laughs> for me. <Sorry>. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. but I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? I guess so. Okay, we got the minutes approved, and we're going to move right on to the, I mean, the agenda approved, and now we'll move for the adopt, approval of the minutes of our regular meeting, January 26, 2023. Um, Mr. Chairman, on page three, okay. at the top of the page, Director Davis has pointed out to us a typo, and we're going to make that change subject to the uh, board's approval, and that will now read... Director Davis stated that a hospitality group meets at the chamber monthly. And also, uh, for the record, that needs to be changed at the top of the copy I have anyway. It says November 17th, and that should reflect the January 26, 2023. We'll get that corrected also on all of those pages. All right. So we can have a motion with the corrections. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, no. Okay, now we've got that taken care of. We can move right into our action items. The first item being the FY2223 spending modification, plan modification. And uh, Anthony? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thanks to all of you for joining us today on behalf of the Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority. So it's become customary for us to uh, consider a spending plan modification at the beginning of each meeting. and. Really, the intent with most of those modifications is to gain authorization for us to pursue new and interesting initiatives on behalf of tourism in our community. But this one's a little bit different in the fact that we want to revive an initiative that we started on in 2016, but unfortunately, was um, it didn't survive COVID. As you recall, or as you know, I should say, our military heritage, heritage is a very um, unique component of our community and one that we, that we love and want to promote. And so in 2016, recognizing this, we felt there was an opportunity to share that with former military members by hosting reunions. A lot of this happens naturally anyways, but by having a facilitator or a concierge, whatever you want to call it, uh, the intent was that we would be able to increase the frequency of those reunions and then also um, convince those folks that there's plenty to do here in our community and that they should stay, they should come earlier and stay longer. And so over the years, uh, we partnered with the chamber to develop the program materials that you see. It included itineraries and various things that uh, really gave our military reunion folks a taste of Jacksonville, and it also helped to um, smooth out some of the logistics of their visit. You can see here that we had coins, challenge coins, that we would hand to the participants, and when they showed this at various restaurants and, and other establishments throughout town, you know, discounts were offered, some as much as 50%. You can see Yo Breeze there, at 50% off, which is very generous. And multiple people, many, many, many people uh, took advantage of this. And what we're finding is that many people remember it. So now that COVID is over, uh, the military reunion interest has resumed. And we mentioned during your subcommittee meetings that they're coming in the door, I wouldn't say in droves, but they're definitely stacking up on us and the intent here with the uh, budget modification is for us to reallocate some funds to better pursue and organize these military reunions. This here is what I would consider <coughs> as, a, um, as a smaller reunion. Some of the ones that we're talking to right now are as many as 400 people. So if you scale that up and consider what the economic impact of each one of those might be, it's considerable. And then for our hoteliers, you see what the room nights there is for 86 participants, that's significant as well. And so with this coordinator, the intent 
is to increase the frequency, increase the hospitality, better engage them with our community so we have a better um, economic return. And of course, those folks who join us have a better experience and then want to in turn return in years in the future. So looking at the economic impact here, uh, this is a yearly projection and I did a low and a high because I want to quantify what the opportunity is here if we decide to pursue. So on the low side, that's assuming that we have one event that's slightly larger than what we see here per month, okay? So that's 12 events throughout the year. That is an extremely low projection because we're probably already seeing that level right now. Um, so $840,000 worth of economic activity generation with room nights at 2,400, a $208,000 impact. Now I have to uh, give praise to Mr. Davis here because we spent a good amount of time on the phone last week talking about our new star data. And star data is information that's provided to us about hotel performance. It's not something that we've um, religiously worked with in years past, but it's something that we are going to consult with moving forward. And Mr. Davis, I believe, is going to give us a, a greater taste of that here during his report. But the number that we got for the room nights is based upon what we consider uh, the average daily rate of all the hotels in, in Jacksonville. And so you move up to as high, and, and during the heyday of our partnership with the Chamber, uh, they, were, they were hosting three to four of these a month, okay? And we feel like that opportunity is still there. But this high projection is based upon three per month, again, at the same smaller size that we saw on the slide before. And you can see what the economic return and then the hotel room night projection would be. So we're talking about some real money, not to mention the fact that this improves the potential experience that those folks have in our community, especially for the ones who are gonna be here anyways. And, and really, I, I think this gives us a good opportunity to connect, better connect those folks with local businesses. So we can connect them directly with hotels, we can connect them directly with restaurants and services that they may need. So again, this is just a great opportunity and we're hoping to kind of revive this uh, in, a, in a timely fashion because the requests are piling up and the season, the reunion season is starting. So the request is that we would reappropriate some funding in the budget to pursue a tourism coordinator. And again, their primary mission would be the military reunion program. Uh, but also we want this person to focus on some other things, and this would likely be in partnership with folks like uh, Deanna and Teresa and Stephanie and Susan as well. So we all work as a, as a great big team, but we also want to spend more time on things like research data, gathering intelligence on how we're performing. Uh, we also want to better engage with our hospitality partners, something I mentioned just a second ago. Uh, but we also want to expand that further past military reunions just to day-to-day uh, -to -day coordination. And then personally, <laughs> I really need some assistance with administrative support. You know, this is a part-time job for, for me and, and for the rest of the team. And we love this job and we want to continue to be engaged and, and, and doing great things on behalf of the board and the community. But we really need some support. And, and this would, would fit that role. So the request is that the Board of Directors reappropriate 13300 from the unassigned promotions line item. So this is money that's not obligated at this point uh, to salaries and benefits for us to pursue a full-time coordinator. Now, the way that that would work, this individual would actually be a city employee, okay? Mm -hmm. And so it would report through the chain of command to the city manager, but their primary function would be to support the, the, the Tourism Development Authority. Uh, Mr. Thomas and Mr. Warden are very familiar with this approach and the fact that that's what we do with the Transportation Advisory Committee. So again, we've done this in other, in other areas. 
I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have and uh, would appreciate your consideration of the, of the spending plan amendment. Well, Anthony and I have talked about this, and of course, the next step is for the city council to accept this money to add another full time employee with the city of Jacksonville. Because when you add full time employees, they begin, and he's got he's put all the numbers here, that's not the question. But they then, after six months, you know, they, they're vested uh, and they're no longer probationary employees and so forth. So, all the rules and regulations, personnel rules and regulations that apply to each of us as we join the city of Jackson would apply to this person and they would be put into the uh, uh, chain of command, if you will, under Anthony, I'm sure. Uh, the city manager would, would designate that. But again, the council has to in my, accept that and to allocate another uh, position, full-time employee position in the human resources uh, scheme. Yes, sir, that's correct. This is a two-step process. So today we would potentially appropriate the funding that basically signaling to the council that the TDA is interested in adding this person. And then at a later date, I don't think it would be the next meeting, but probably the following meeting, we would ask the council to take action to create this position and authorize hire. You're actually wanting to, to go to finish up this fiscal year so that it would not be part of budget discussions for council next year, but this is, this is something that you would take outside of the budget consideration. Yes, sir. That's okay. the intent. And, okay. and really, if, if the timing was different, we would wait until the budget. But right. given the fact that these requests just keep coming right. in, um, and they have a good lead time as far as planning requirements. So, for instance, with our Montford Point folks, we've been talking with them for months already, and that's a big lift. And so we really need somebody in addition to Teresa and Susan who can kind of help facilitate that and make it a very positive experience for everyone. So you're going to be looking for somebody with hotel hospitality experience. Is that, is that your, going to be your primary focus, you think? Potentially, potentially. Ideally, we would find someone who is just interested in this field, willing to learn and wants to work hard because we're not starting. The intent here is not to, to start with a manager. Right. Okay. Right. The intent is to start with a coordinator, coordinator or a technician. And so that gets us into the business with them and then allows us to grow them over time to become uh, something at a higher level. But really, we want good quality people who are here to work, enjoy the community, and support the mission of what we're trying to accomplish here. Matthew, y'all have already developed a position mm -hmm. uh, description. We, it would have to be advertised, et cetera. And of course, Sabrina will have to work with HR. You can't hire somebody until there's a budgeted position again. Mm -hmm. uh, we just all need to be on the same page about that. Uh, and that requires council action in several yes. ways, not only allocating the position, but also the budget amendment to provide the funds for that. And of course, as Anthony's saying, this is not, this is for the short term as an amendment to the council's budget, Mr. Warden, for this year, but also it'll be in your budget for a full time right. for the whole year of 2024. It, it will be in the budget proposal for yes. fiscal 24. Mm -hmm. And like John said, we do have a full job description with career development plan. We've done all of the HR work and, and feel really comfortable with where we're headed. Uh, but given the specialized nature of this job, we didn't want to write it too specific. You know, we want the best candidate and we can teach them from there as long as they're willing to learn and, and support the organization. It sounds like it's a more of a, uh, the initial point of contact for these event planners and initial point of contact and legwork and collecting the, uh, the qualifying information that somebody presents with a new event, just collecting all the details and saving some of the. It basically becomes like a concierge for these folks, you know, helping them arrange things. We're not going to do all of the work for them. But given our local knowledge and the fact that we're here, you know, we can help. We can definitely smooth out the process. Um, and one of the things that I feel really strong about is, is that when we have these captive opportunities, we want to proactively go to our hotel partners and give them the opportunity to participate in this. You know, right now, um, the way that it works, it's kind of luck of the draw as to which hotel you know, these organizations want to connect with. 
and and I think based upon our guidance and assistance, we can connect them with the one that best suits their needs, and give others the opportunity to uh, to bid on these these uh, these events as well. Sounds pretty good, Anthony. Nobody can say we rushed into it because we've been here 12 or 13 years and have yet to employ We've, <laughs> we've finally grown up city. to this yeah. point, sir. So uh, I think it's a, a smart move. I really do. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so we need a motion to amend the yeah, spending make a motion to approve the spending plan to hire a full-time coordinator. Second. Okay. I guess we're all in favor. Dr. Mason. All in favor. Motion carries. Very good, Anthony. Thanks for the Thank good you. work you do. And we're going to move on to our second item, which is a presentation we've all been looking forward to from the Jacksonville Oslo Sports Commission. Welcome. Good, good to see everybody again. Um, so, Anthony asked me to give an update, and I'm not going to cover every event since we last talked. You guys get the emails and, and see those updates and uh, you know, your, your funding and support of our organization obviously helps us do everything that we do. But I kind of wanted to focus on, if you remember, you guys came through with some extra funding last year that had some kind of caveats tied to it. So I wanted to update you along those lines. So thanks to that, we were able to, to hire that third part-time uh, person. This is Judy. And uh, it, she's been invaluable when it comes to events. You know, before it was just Marisa and I trying to kind of coordinate every aspect of every event. So having another body there has been a uh, major, major difference. So uh, that, that's the first thing. And then we have been able to do some additional events. So thanks to you guys and, and partnership with Susan, you know, we were able to host uh, the, the Carolina Gloves East back in February. And uh, it was a, a tremendous success. I, I do want to talk about the numbers on this one. So Estimated room nights of 675, uh, over 255,000 estimated economic impact. Uh, the, the neat thing is there was 182 boxers. Only 15 of those were from one hour away or closer. And now I'll, I'll quickly read off where they were from. Canada, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, Maryland, Arkansas, D.C., Florida, Michigan, Nebraska, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Tennessee, Texas, Virginia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. So... Uh, this is this is what we talk about when we talk about doing events. Uh, 86 coaches, 30 officials, family and friends, and the average stay was three nights. So they had to be here on Thursday night for registration, and then there was boxing Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, some tweaks that we've already talked about. So Mark, uh, that we work with, the organizer of this event, uh, he did get some calls from some coaches that say, hey, we wanted to come but we can't have our guys miss Thursday and Friday of school. Now that's President's Day weekend, so they're already out on Monday. So what we're gonna do next year, and Susan just said we got, we've got the, the facility locked in, um, registration will now be on Friday night. They will box Saturday and Sunday only. Now it's gonna make those days a lot more jam-packed. But I still think you'll get a lot of three-night stays because it's gonna go so late on Sunday that they're gonna to have to stay. But also, based on the phone calls he got, even if you only cover half of that, the number of boxers is gonna go up. So you should see room nights go up, even though maybe we're boxing one less day. Uh, he was very thankful, very complimentary, uh, not only to our organization, but to you guys, because you know he does this event in other cities and said, does not get the same kind of support. Uh, here's the venue, we'll see you later, versus, mm -hmm. you know, we were there. We had at least one staff member there at all times. We had f at least five volunteers there at all times, uh, not to mention the front-end help, the financial support that not only came from you guys, but came from us. So uh, he's ready to make this an annual event and uh, thinks it'll continue to grow. So we had, that, we had to, you provided some on-site on security to do some of our funding too. Is well, correct. We had we had an officer there at all times. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. So um, we didn't have any problems, knock on wood. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you never know. But you know, always smart to have them there. The other thing that we mentioned, you guys, that we were going to be able to do with this is 
The New River Splash that's coming up in May is now part of the North Carolina Triathlon Series. Mm -hmm. So um, we're about 44 days out. Uh, we're, what we say, 109 uh, registered so far. That's about double of where we were 44 days out last year. Okay. As you guys know, runners tend to wait till last two or three weeks. But uh, the fact that we've doubled, so we really think we'll probably hit that 250, 275, maybe even 300 mark, which would be a, a huge uptick for, for that event. And not only that, um, the fact that it's part of their series and our series, they also come in with a lot more manpower, building that transition area, having timers at all the different, you know, the, the swim and the bike and the start where Again, we were kind of spread thin doing that in the past with, with a, an event that is that big of a scope. Uh, that will also allow Marisa, Judy, myself, and our board members, we can focus on getting all the volunteers out, picking them up. We're not having to worry about timing or, or some of those kind of things. So that's going to be very helpful. Another new event for this summer is we partnered with a, a local uh, chess director, and we're going to attempt to a chess tournament in August. Hmm. Uh, the way this came about when I was in, in grad school, now completely different level from what this is, but when I was in grad school, I was doing an internship for the Knoxville Sports Corporation and we hosted the Super National Junior Chess. There was like 4,700 kids playing chess in the convention center. And so I'm like, well, maybe we could do something on a smaller scale here and see if we could grow it. So. Uh, August 4th and 5th, it's actually, I think we're going to make it a three down. I think it's going to be 4th through the 6th. Uh, we're going we're gonna to start a chess tournament and see what we can, can grow from there. Uh, there's pictures of kids here, but, you know, chess is done by your skill level. So if I were, and I don't even know how to play chess. If I were, if I were any good at chess, I may be playing a 12-year-old who's on that same level or I may be playing a 65-year-old who's on that same level. So it's not an age group thing, it's, it's, a, it's a skill level thing. The, the other thing is we've added two more races mm -hmm. to our uh, race series. One is the Onslow uh, Memorial Hospital Foundation, their Miles for Mammos is coming in as a partner. And then a brand new race is our Moving Mullet 5K. You'll notice there we have a, a, a mullet with a mullet. Um, <laughs> And that'll be the, the Saturday before the Mullet Festival down in Swansboro. And so um, just another opportunity to attract some folks to our area. The other thing that I wanted to, to point out, and I think you guys know this, but, but I think it's forgotten sometimes and something that we need to reiterate. Out of the funding that we get from you, we also in turn fund sporting events that are bringing room nights to our community. Now we also, uh, sometimes we help with time, sometimes we help with finances, sometimes we help with equipment, or sometimes it's all the above. Uh, but coming up on April 17th and 18th, the uh, CIAA, they're having their men's golf championship here. So this is a conference within the historically black colleges and universities and their men's golf championship is going to be at the country club uh, for a couple days there. So eight men's golf teams will come in, plus all of their staff. And, of course, you'll have some fans and some parents. But that's one that we give financial support to. Another couple of events that we gave some financial support to was the, the Broken Heart Open uh, youth wrestling event. That was back in February. Estimated room nights of 246 over 150,000 in economic impact. They told us that they are now the second largest youth wrestling tournament in the state. And they were 37 away from being the largest. So um, that, that was year two of that event. Uh, also in, in conjunction with you guys and the whole Veterans Day weekend, we supported the Military Basketball uh, Association tournament that was at the Commons. Uh, estimated 200 room nights, a little over 75,000 in, in that event. And then some other events that we, obviously ECI is the huge one, and we give not only lots of time, but um, resources uh, financially for that. Our partners in our race series receive, not only do we help all cross-promote each other, uh, but 
this last year, for example, each of those partners uh, running with the law, Ainsley's Angels, um, who am I forgetting? Uh, what did you say? The YMCA all received a check for over 700 bucks at the end of the year uh, from money we raised there. We, we tunnels to towers, we give equipment. Obviously, we host one of the packet pickups for the Marine Corps Half Marathon. We just gave some equipment for the Global Walk. And while it's not much, we, we help out just by getting some breakfast donated for the pickleball tournament because that's such a great event for our community. So, and, and it varies from year to year, obviously, as far as what events are going on. But anywhere we give financial grants, anywhere between 10 and 13,000 on, on a given year. Um, so that not only helps them, but that also means maybe they're not coming to you guys asking for money and, and we can support them in that way. So the last thing I want to tell you, and then uh, we'll be happy just to answer some uh, questions or, or touch on anything. So uh, fiscal year to date, and again, this is all track sporting events in Onslow County. We try to track everything we can, so I'm not saying these are all of our events. Uh, a little over 1.5 million in estimated economic impact and over 4,500 room nights. The exciting thing, though, is just since January 1st, uh, a little low, almost 772,000 in economic estimated economic impact in over 2,100 room nights. So we're definitely heading in the right direction. Obviously, this fiscal year, there's still some big ones to come with ECI and, and some of those. But that, that's a quick overview of what we've been able to do with, with that funding. But I, I'll be happy to answer any questions or touch on anything else that you uh, would like to talk about. I noticed you were bragging about how you were going to uh, play a 12-year-old in uh, chess. I, I would lose. I, I can only play if they allow two-year-olds to play. So, uh. Checkers. So. <laughs> but are you prepared to deal with such a defeat? <laughs> That's the uh, question. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> are any? No, I, I feel like you covered that very well. Yeah, we thank you for, yeah. for what you do for Onzo County and Jacksonville. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you both. Thank yeah, thanks. I know Chris hosted several of the officials for boxing, and uh, we saw Brenda this morning. She was the, the, the weigh-ins, and, and all of the, that was at the courtyard by Marriott, and I, they sold out that, that weekend. They also had some officials, but a lot of the boxers stayed there, so um, she, was, she was ready to host them again if, we, if we'd have the weigh-ins and stuff there, so it was good. All right. Nice. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Yeah, thank great. you, guys. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could, I'd like to just add one thing if you don't Certainly. mind. But if, if you look at that Carolina Gloves event yeah. and you hear what Scott was saying about the 700 and some, 700 and some thousand since, uh, since January, that was obviously a large portion of it. And the only reason that we were able to take advantage of that opportunity is because Scott brought it to us quickly through our subcommittee process, we were able to allocate resources, you know, and then we were also, uh, the biggest lift in my yes. mind was our recreation department and yep. Susan being able to be supportive and nimble in their ability to kind of redirect the programming that they had. Uh, the, the great opportunity for that particular weekend is that's when Jack Hamiet opened up, and please correct me if I'm saying anything wrong here, but by having Jack Amiet back online, we were able to adjust. And so, you know, the partnerships that we're forming here with the Sports Commission, with the TDA, and of course, always at, at, with the city's uh, Recreation and Parks Department, you know, those are the things that make things go. And, and we were able to grab this one quickly. I don't remember from when we found out about it to when it occurred, it wasn't, but a handful. We started, we started talking at our August event serious probably more around October. October. Uh, so this didn't have a long fuse right. like a lot of our other ones do, but uh, it's something that we were able to capture from Fayetteville mm -hmm. and hopefully they're going to continue to come here year after year. He's ready. He's excited. There we go. It was a lot of things fell into place. It's yes, great. sir. And, and part of that, actually a lot of that was your support and we really appreciate that. Well, thanks. Uh, so I guess including the packet is a
tourism related committee report and we can move on to our promotion committee report and I guess we'll start with the hotelier update All right. so Anthony had mentioned that we are receiving um, STR data from Smith travel research now and February was the first full month of data that we had received uh, so now we're able to see that out of the, there are 24 hotels reporting this data uh, that reported data in February to STR, uh, showing that Jacksonville hotels finished with a 61.5% occupancy in February this year. Uh, and it's also noted that that is an 8.6% increase year over year for the same month. Um, and we can also see that year to date the Jacksonville properties have collectively finished at 55.7% occupancy, <clears throat> which is a 7% increase year over year for the first two months. So we're definitely, it, it's definitely nice to be able to, to gauge those metrics now in comparison with the tax revenue that we, we normally report on. A lot of primary demand right now, of course, is that there's government demand, as always in this market. A lot of construction project-related business still ongoing at the base and around town. Um, there is some other data that comes in this report, and we're still trying to get familiar with what's going to be most beneficial to share. But, you know, number of rooms available within Jacksonville. Um, so we can start gauging as we have new properties that are opening in mid-April, such as my place mm -hmm. here in town. Um, as we build this data going through the year, it's going to become it's going to have increasing value to it as we move along. And that's just a that's just the general update that I have. I think Teresa. Yep, Teresa. Welcome. If I could add one thing about the STAR report before Teresa starts her presentation. That's yet another partnership opportunity. And, you know, we've been looking for research data for months and months now, and there's tons of opportunities out there. So we were approached by Onslow County Tourism, and actually Teresa, I think, initiated that um, to, to combine um, – to combine resources and share in the cost of this star data. So they get what they need, we get what we need, and neither one of us have to pay full price. So it's just a great opportunity for us to, to get what we need without having to pay, you know, what could be thousands and thousands of dollars a year. Thank you. Very good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I wanted to give you a quick update on what your marketing team has been up to. And I'll start with in uh, March, staff and Susan and I both attended the um, state conference and see, visit and see conference and um, had a good time. We, uh, in addition to learning trends and, and laws and everything that they provide uh, in their uh, seminars and in their classes, we, um, Susan was able to pitch media uh, as a part of the event every year. They bring everybody into a room and you get to pitch your, your DMO. And so she pitched six media outlets and writers and found them to be more engaged with her than ever, asking a lot of questions. Um, the food trail is a hot item. You'll hear more about that. Um, and then she pitched the, uh, which all, all everybody does, is pitch the um, travel guide writers. And so in doing that, she got a call back right after the conference. They were looking to add, uh, they wanted more coverage from Native Americans in the guide. And remember last year, they did feature the powwow in the guide. And so uh, the powwow that we have here. So based on them knowing that and knowing Susan, they called her and said, hey, we want to include more about Native Americans. Do you know someone in your network that could do some writing and, and give it some authenticity? And so Susan quickly reached out to Raquel, and Raquel Painter is actually going to write the story for the travel guide. So that's pretty exciting. 
<clears throat> so you know that we collaborate with Onslow County as well, Onslow County Tourism, on a buy for our state magazine, and it enables us to buy it at a much better rate. They buy three months and we buy three months. So we're in that guide promoting our area six months out of 12. So repetition is key and we need to stay you know, focused and, and putting our story out there. So in March, I hope you all get the magazine and saw the ad, American Stories Told Here. We ran this last year one time and we decided we needed to run it again. It's an opportunity in March to promote for people traveling in May and just be able to kind of let them know that we have some things that they can do here. <clears throat> April, we had our first official print paid ad uh, for the International Food Trail. So we put this ad together and um, look forward to that helping. You remember we um, printed a visitor's guide two, over two years ago now, or well, right at two years. <clears throat> when we printed these guides in, well, in 2021, 20, um, we printed 25,000. Typically, in the past, there have been 20,000 printed. And that 20,000 lasts for two years or so. We went through 25,000 guides in a little over a year this time, about a year and three months. So we had to reorder. We reordered 15, and we looked to do an update in 2024, in fiscal year 24. So, you know, travel guides are important. Um, we just had a discussion this morning at the hospital, at the TAC meeting, that people still want that guide in their hand. Believe it or not, we all think everything lives online, and it does, and we have a tremendous amount of downloads on our website and on Onslow County Tourism, but people still request the guides. And these are people, if they request a guide, they've got intent on traveling to the market. So we've got to put our best foot forward in that guide all the time. I think Salem said that they're sending out, because when we get a request, we send it to them. And she said they're sending 20 to 30 out a week lately. So that's pretty exciting to hear. Um, and uh, we also know people want them when they get here. So some of them do pick them up when they're already in the market and they're in all of our hotels and uh, at the airport, and we can't keep them in stock at the airport. So International Food Trail, we <laughs> told you that was going really well, and last week Susan was in town, Susan Dozier was in town with Heidi Bellotto, who is the food uh, foodie food blogger. She's pretty renowned from Charlotte, and she was, they were here vetting the restaurants for phase two. We're looking to add 10 to 12 locations, uh, and that'll be ready for summer travel season for sure. So they were in town gathering, you know, all kinds of food and stories to put with them of the owners and such and doing interviews. So uh, one interesting little fact that I read on one of the Visit NC's uh, research pages just the other day was food trails are one of the biggest travel trends for 2023 that they're projecting. So we're right on the money with being able to promote that. And food is actually a motivator for about half of people looking to travel. We all like to eat. So, um, <clears throat> so look for, for that coming up. We'll keep you posted on that. Um, some of the things, additional things coming up that we're working on, we just did a video shoot two weeks ago. We have uh, another video shoot, two more this year. We, our spring digital campaign is launching uh, in a week or two, so we're ready to go on that. The, uh, Susan has together a familiarization tour, fam tour is scheduled for May. It is about the international food trail primarily, but these people can't eat all day. So they do, I mean, it seems like they do, right, Anthony? <laughs> but they do other things, like they'll go to the gardens, they may go to Swansboro, so they work in other things as well, so they get a good feel for the community, not just the food while they're here. But she's got some pretty heavy hitters on that list already. She'll end up with probably six in town. 
Uh, we have been adding website content as feverishly as we can, and the city staff, I can't thank them enough, Lisa and Kelsey. Kelsey's amazing. She can turn stuff around super, super quick. So they're, they're assisting with all that. And then we're continuing to work to uh, find the best um, resource for getting some research for us. We want the most we can get for our money. <clears throat> Moving on to events, the, uh, since we met last, uh, Jacksonville's Jazz in the City was in February, and they had a two-day event. They brought back their talent show, that, the talent hunt that they do on Friday night, and they had nine contestants. I think there were actually ten, and maybe somebody bailed last minute, but they had nine that night, and um, they had some incredible talent. It's amazing what people can do that we don't know about. Um, so that was good, and it was pretty well attended. And they, they, their event is at Sturgeon City, and they max it out. They can't do any more. So um, they uh, added something new this year. They sold 240 tickets, but they added new where they sold VIP tables for more money, and they were dressed up a little nicer. They sold immediately. So I guarantee you they're going to add a few more VIP tables next year. But that just helps them in their mission, you know, of sending boys to camp. So uh, I think that's awesome. And interesting point, it, when we looked at the back end analytics to the website, the traffic that came to the website, if you looked at, we looked at it geographically, where are those people from? Um, in order of numbers, sorry, let me advance this. They, areas of interest were Charlotte first, uh, then Jacksonville, of course, Raleigh, Greenville, and Fayetteville. So there was some good interest there. I think it's a great event that has some potential, uh, has more potential, actually. And they ended up with 20 overnight stays. Onslow uh, Bridal Expo was um, held on a Sunday this year. First time they had some, some issues with um, being able to snag a Saturday because Susan is overload and um, at the Commons, and this was their biggest year they've ever had. They had over 300 people register, and those are just brides. And, and they had 37 vendors, 50 confirmed sales that day. Go to the stats, I'm sorry. Um, they had 50 confirmed sales from the vendors that day. They went around and took a survey, and they had uh, each of the vendors got over 1,600 leads. So a couple points about this, in, in my humble opinion, is one important thing is this helps people in our area. This helps brides know that and realize that they can have a nice wedding in Jacksonville in Onslow County. So they ha we have the vendors, we have you know, what they need for, to have a nice wedding. So that is good. And also to remember that their key overnight impact is truly when they have their wedding. So their friends and family come from out of town. So we certainly want as many as we can to have their weddings here. And uh, some of the venues you know, have, I mean, the venues are there too. A couple of the hoteliers and some of the other wedding venues are there. Mike's Farm did a great display. So um, it's nice to know that we have some more options than we used to. <clears throat> the next event was just last week was the St. Patty's Engineer. Uh, it's a mud run. Uh, well, it's a <clears throat> mud run and an obstacle course and all kinds of things. So uh, they had 500 registrations this year, which was pretty solid. Uh, 37 of them, 37 percent was from outside of the county, and they had an estimated 125 overnight stays. They're still surveying right now. They survey for three weeks, I think, after the event, so those numbers could change a little bit. And then just wanted to remind you of a couple of things coming up. We have Jacksonville Jamboree, uh, first week in May, first weekend in May. And then you can see in June, we've got three events and the marathon, the half marathon in September. The uh, Pacific Arts Festival and, and um, Charity Ball and uh, those two are already um, advertising. So we're moving forward. These are all events that you fund, that we market for you. So. Uh, one other little note, if you don't know, is May 
7th through 13th is National Travel and Tourism Week. So I met with Salem and a couple of folks after the meeting this morning, and, and Marisa was there. We talked about uh, some things we can do locally to gain some exposure for that. This is their 40th anniversary, and it's nationally, they celebrate uh, the value that travel brings to communities um, for economy, for business, and uh, personal well-being. So it's a pretty fun event, and they've got some pretty great ways that we can tie in. So we'll follow suit with what the national folks do and what um, the state does, does it in C. And that's a wrap, unless there's any questions. Well, I did read an article that the Onslow County Tourism Authority group got an award. Was that in the newspaper? I don't know if any of else saw that. There was a, I guess a statewide article. Oh, for their hospitality service? Oh, the hospitality thing, yeah. And then, yeah, Marisa and Scott got an award also. Um, tell them about that, yeah. Marisa. Please. Come tell us. <laughs> okay. Come tell us. I'm probably going to get it wrong. I don't remember all the details. That's okay. uh, we submitted for a marketing campaign that we did for our Sledgehammer Beach Run, and that was a marketing campaign from last year. And so that was a partnership with Onslow County Tourism, and they were able to accept the award for us from huh. NCTIA. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it was the Platinum Award. So. Yeah. Keep it. That's right. Yeah, that's a really cool race. I said from the beginning, that's a really neat thing to do is to run on the beach. Nobody else is doing it. Literally, it was 19 degrees. So oh, yeah, it was this year. A very cold race. <laughs> <laughs> that was this year, 19 right. degrees on the beach. Wonderful. But some people showed up, right? Mm -hmm. Believe it or not. So. All right. Well, very good, Teresa. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. That's true. Well, I guess we're at the at the end of our agenda, unless we have some director's comments. I guess we've got a, a light group here, not many sure. to comment on <laughs> or from. But again, I'd like to thank everyone for being here and those watching us on G10 and uh, Teresa, Susan, Steve, everybody. We appreciate your support and look forward to the good things coming. With that said, I'll adjourn the 91st meeting of the Jacksonville Tourism Development Authority.